Okay, let's continue on with SAS and expand upon mix-ins. I want to talk about the at content directive, which is something that we can use in combination with mix-ins. What I've done is I've defined a mix-in called CLR. Here I want to put a border, and then I'm going to use this mix-in in two other classes. So I'm including this CLR mix-in in both of these things. Then when I compile it, what I'm getting is both those classes with that little bit of CSS included inside of each one. So I'm getting some reuse out of it. And that's the basic idea behind mix-ins. Now sometimes you want to pass a whole chunk of CSS to a mix-in to create something. That's where the at content directive comes in. So what we can do is when we call it, we can put a set of curly braces here. And inside of here, we can define some CSS to pass up to the mix-in. So let's say we wanted to pass in, um, let's say, background color. And we'll set that to our C variable from up above here. And then we will pass in a uh, order color property. And I will pass in the BW variable for that. All right, so let's. Uh, render that. Oh, actually, sorry, before we do that, um, this is where we bring in the at content directive. So with the curly brace here, what we're doing is we're taking this chunk of content and we're passing it up to this mix in. So it's going to ask for at content. So save that. We'll run it again. Okay, now we'll take a look at our CSS file. And there we have it. Here's the color one with the content passed in. So those two lines, cornflower blue, that was the value of C, and the BW was DDD. And sure enough, the DDD is there. Black white, we didn't pass any content in, so nothing is added. So we can use this at content as an optional parameter that allows us to pass in this big chunk of code. Now there's also variables that can be passed in. So this color one, we could create a variable called C and give it a default value of, let's say, red. Then I'm going to use the variable C like this. So the default value of this is going to be red. Run this again. Jump back into here. And there it is. The red is being used as the default. The red's used again here as the default. We still have the ability that we had previously that I can come in here and I can pass in values. So I can pass in a variable here, uh, sorry, a value for the variable. I can take my variable C from up here. I can pass in that variable to be used here or we can put something entirely new. Let's put in Rebecca purple. Save that and run it again. Okay, now let's take a look and see what we've got here. So there's a whole bunch of variables. I've got a variable C here that I'm referencing here, BW that I'm referencing here. I'm passing a value here to another variable C and I've got a variable C here. So C is appearing in a lot of different places. Let's take a look at this and see what we can do. So actually, I'm going to um, split this so we can look at both of them at the same time. There we are. Expand this a little bit, make it easier to read. There we are. All right, in the class color, in color, we are passing, we're calling the mix in CLR and we're passing the color Rebecca purple. So there's Rebecca purple inside of color. So this one got passed up into here. It replaces the default value of red with Rebecca purple. And then the border right here is using the local variable C. So this one is local to the mix in. Inside the content, however, we've got cornflower blue. That is the value of C. And that's because these variables get turned into their values at the point where they're declared. So where they're being read, 
This one's being red right here, so it's going to take the closest thing to it, which is this one. It's declared inside the same scope. Down here, this one is a chunk of content. So that chunk of content is rendered here before it gets passed over to here to be used in this place for the at content. And the black and white still gets red because we did not pass up a value from here into this. So a lot of moving parts here. Content will allow you to have curly braces around a chunk of content. Pass it up, use it inside the mix in. You have the parentheses in addition to the curly braces here. So same thing down here. We have the parentheses that allows us to pass values up. The curly braces allow us to pass stuff to content. So there's two different areas that are passing things to a mix-in. The parentheses get passed into variables. The curly braces get passed into at content. So this one is from the curly braces. OK, so that is the at content directive. It just allows us to pass big chunks of pre-written CSS optionally, because it's not happening here, into a mix-in to be used. Uh, these can be very useful when you're creating your at media queries. So the at media command, and then you can pass in different chunks of content based on whatever your media queries are. So if you've got multiple media queries, you can call the same mix-in multiple times and be passing little bits of custom CSS to them, as well as variables. And then we've got the local versus the global variables. All right, hope you found that useful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.